the bakers of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western theater. Drifting along, singing a song. Western Theater, starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage, bringing you the music, the stories, and the spirit of the great open spaces. And now, the Riders of the Purple Sage. Riding, roping in the blazing sun all day, singing, swinging, and I travel on my way. Riding, rocking, roping, branding cattle all day long Singing and a-swinging to a cowboy song Riding, roping in the blazing sun all day Riding in the saddle all day long To a long and lonesome cowboy song Riding through the burnt desert sand To the land and country where a man's a man And I'll go riding, roping in the blazing sun all day Thank you, friends. You know, there's a lot of things in this world that aren't very logical at all. For instance, a score of magazines are devoted to women's fashions. Fortunes are spent by motion picture producers to clothe their actresses in the latest styles. Dress manufacturers get nervous breakdowns trying to design something new. And yet the dream in every man's heart is of an old-fashioned girl. That's one reason so many love songs keep living on and on. This one, for instance, Peg My Heart. Smiles and dare and peg, oh my heart, your glances with Irish heart in trances. Come be my own, come make your home in my heart. Peg, oh my heart, I love you, we'll never part. I heard your lilting laughter. It's your Irish heart I'm after. Peg, oh my heart, your glances with Irish heart in trances. Come be my own. Come make your home in mine. Many modern conveniences which we enjoy today as a matter of course were unknown to the settlers of the early West. For transportation, they had only the horse or rough-riding buckboard. For light, only a sputtering tallow candle or feeble kerosene lamp. And for cooking, an open fire or, if they were lucky, a massive wood-burning range. And bread-making was a chore that meant long hours in a hot kitchen. Today, there's no need for this. Western women can always find plenty of fresh, delicious Weber's bread at their neighborhood grocer's. And most housewives prefer this fine bread in the familiar blue gingham wrapper. They know Weber's bread is always well-mixed and well-baked with the distinctive flavor enjoyed by every member of the family. At breakfast, lunch, and dinner, always serve plenty of Weber's bread, that good bread in the blue gingham wrapper. You'll like it. The novelty song has been a part of American music since the beginning of our nation. Today, it's across the alley from the Alamo. In Abe Lincoln's time, it was Blue Tail Fly. When I was young, I used to wait on my 
lasso and hand him his play. Pass down the bottle when he got dry and brush away the blue tail fly. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Mass is gone away. One day he rode around the farm. The flies so numerous they did swarm. One chance to bite him on the thigh. The devil take the blue-tailed fly. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Mass has gone away. The pony run. He'd jump and pitch and tumble massa in the ditch. He died and the jury wondered why. The verdict was the blue tail fly. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Jim crack corn, I don't care. Terry, if you don't mind, I'm going to step in and introduce this next number. Because it was written by a good friend of ours, Jimmy Wakely. You folks have probably heard it before, and you'll hear it many times in the future. Because Jimmy's written a mighty fine song. He called it Too Late. Too late, too late to ask forgiveness. Too late, too late for me to cry. She's gone, she's gone, she left this morning And this is how she said goodbye Upon my pillow was a letter It said I still don't want to scold If you don't change your way of living May God have mercy on your soul you know I love you as no other, but you have played around too long. Goodbye, good luck, and don't forget me, though I will be a long time gone. Too late, too late, my heart keeps crying. I should have known she'd go away. Suffer. It always seems to end that way. You know I love you as no other, but you have played around too long. Goodbye, good luck, and don't forget me. Oh, I will be a long time gone. Too late, too late, my heart keeps crying. Well, it's time now for Foy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage to describe another of their adventures in the West. This week, they called their story The Fires at Sherman Point. Railroad passengers traveling in the main line aren't apt to notice the spur track that runs off to Sherman Point. But if they could follow it to the end, they'd see a rare sight. Cattle pens the size of city blocks, row on row of them, stretching as far as the eye can see, all filled with animals, eating, living the three months in a feeding pen that turns the range yearlings into sleek, plump beef. Three cheerful vagabonds, riders of the Purple Sage, rode lazily toward Sherman Point. Perhaps three cheerful vagabonds is a misnomer. Vagabonds they are in truth, but that morning, only two were cheerful. The third was as melancholy as a rain-drenched rooster. 
You might as well stop your pouting, Johnny. He must be giving about the longest pout in history, don't you think, Foy? I got a right to pout. Why don't you guys let me alone? Yeah. You ain't got no hearts of stone either. Mm -hmm. What if she told you she had to support a poor old mother? What would you have done? Is that what she said? (laughs) Could you stood to see her suffer? Answer that. All Uh, we're objecting to now, Johnny, is that she'll be supporting her poor old mother with our money. And for a good long time to come. I just couldn't sit there to see you cry, could I? Uh Uh-huh. I had to help her a little. A little? Yeah, but you kicked for me right into the poorhouse. Oh, it's all right, Al. Johnny fell for a line of gap, so we're getting him a job at the Sherman Point feed pens. And he's going to work until he pays us back. Oh, everybody's always picking on me. I'd have more peace if I was a fly buzzing around a two-tailed horse. Hey, boy, there's a runway up ahead. What? Look, it's Mr. Morley, the fellow who's supposed to give Johnny the job. His horse is giving him trouble. Come on, let's stop him. Wow, Mr. Morley got thrown. He went right over the horse's head. Go after the horse, Al. Yeah. Right, Johnny, come on. Mr. Morley may be hurt. Okay. Off your horse, quick, Johnny. Don't ask about my job now, Foy. This ain't the time. Mr. Morley, are you hurt? Foy, Foy, I'm mighty glad it's you. Are you hurt, Mr. Morley? Can't you stand up? Get on your horses again. Ride the trail as hard as you can. Try to catch up with my son. What's that? Roger, my son. Follow him. Find out what he's up to. But you're hurt. Just my leg. Roger's headed at the Banner Junction. See what he does there, but don't let him know you're following him. Then ride back to my house this evening. What are we supposed to look for, Mr. Morley? I'll explain later. Go now so you don't lose him. Johnny, when Al brings Mr. Morley's horse, you two see if you can get Mr. Morley home. I'll ride ahead and trail the boy. Don't fail me, Foy. Nothing in my life has ever been as important as this. Don't fail me, whatever you do. We got Mr. Morley back to the house all right, Foy. It wouldn't be polite to ask him for a job now, though. His leg's broke. Well, he may not feel like seeing us then. Have to find out, though, I guess. Hey, what's all the excitement about his son? Oh, I don't know, Al. Roger was just tending the business, as far as I could see. Did you notice there's a bonfire up on the point? Yeah, I saw it a few minutes ago. Dying out, man. Oh, it's probably some gal cooking a picnic supper for a poor old mother she has to support. Yeah. Or something. Why, Foy Willing. Howdy, Miss Turner. And these are your partners, aren't they? I've heard so much about you. I'll slow in, Johnny Paul. Mrs. Turner is Mr. Morley's housekeeper, boy. Pleased to meet you. Howdy. I hope you haven't been waiting long. I was out in the back feeding the chickens until just this minute. Mr. Morley asked me to call on him this evening, Miss Turner. If he isn't well enough... We'll... The doctor's with him right now, but I expect he'll leave soon. Uh, you didn't find out anything about Roger, did you? Anything bad, I mean. Oh? You knew I was trailing him? Mr. Morley told me. No, I didn't see a single thing that could be held against Roger. Well, I'm awfully glad... Mr. Morley has set such store on the boy. Sometimes I think all the troubles we've had have sort of affected Mr. Morley's mind, made him suspicious of the boy. How do you mean, ma'am? Well, after all, Roger's mother left him quite a little money when she died. I believe it's that money he's used, not the stolen money at all. Well, we're kind of in the dark about things, Miss Turner. Mr. Morley hasn't told us what's going on yet. He... Oh, oh my. And here I am gobbling away like an old turkey. I just naturally supposed you knew. Well, it won't go any farther. Say, the doc's leaving, I think. Is that him getting into the car? Yes, it is. Uh, excuse me. I'll see if there's anything I can do for Mr. Morley. Then you can go in. Now, there's that kind of a woman you ought to be setting your eyes on, Johnny. You wouldn't catch her sobbing about having to po- support her poor old mother. She just uh, would up and do it. That's what she'd do. Yeah, but she's strong. Ruthella is delicate and frail. Oh, in a pig's eye. She's Keep quiet, boy. both of you. I'm trying to figure out uh, just what we've got ourselves into here. Mr. Morley says for you to come in now, boys. Thank you, Miss Turner. If there's anything he wants, just call me. I'll be in the kitchen. Come in, boys. Come in. How do you feel, Mr. Morley? Mad, because a thing like this had to happen. Well, what'd you find out? I want to know step by step where Roger went and what he did today. Well, nothing very exciting. After he got to Banner Junction, he spent about an hour in the real estate office, then he went back to the bank and had a talk. Oh, yeah. He has a safety deposit box there. I saw him opening it. Uh, he put some cash in the box, didn't he? I'll tell the truth. I don't know, Mr. Morley. I wasn't near enough to see. All right. And after leaving the bank, he headed back this way, toward home. Yes, sir. He hasn't come to the house yet, though. Boy, I don't know whether you noticed, but there was a bonfire at the point tonight. I could see from my window. Well, yeah, Johnny there called it to my attention. I've been robbed three times in the last three months. And each time... Robbed? You, Mr. Morley? Who by? Nobody knows. The robberies looked like an inside job from the beginning, so I've kept them a secret. 
But the past three times I've shipped cattle to market, the money's disappeared almost as soon as I put it in the safe. Surely you don't keep big sums of cash around, Mr. Morley. Well, checks got a bad reputation here when the bank failed during the last depression. The men I do business with won't take checks. Last night I brought home almost $50,000. I'd sold something like 600 head of steers. When I opened the safe this morning, that money was gone, too. So that's why you had me trailing, Roger. Boy, I'm broke. It's happened three times. I can't keep going any longer. I'm finished. You started to say something about the bonfire at the point. That's a trick of his, I reckon. Builds a fire to make me think there's some sort of mystery attached to the robbery. Each time the money's been gone, a fire's burned on the point next evening. Hmm. That's where Roger's been tonight. Why he didn't come to the house. Well, it doesn't make any difference now. I'll salvage something out of the feed pens. Maybe get enough so I can buy a couple of acres to live on. Does Roger know you suspect him, Mr. Morley? The man sets an awful store in the sun for you. I wouldn't let even myself believe he took the money until this morning when the last disappeared and I saw him setting out again. Mr. Morley, have you got any more cattle ready to sell? Oh, about 500. Not in prime condition, but they'll do. Why? I reckon you ought to sell them pronto. Oh, but if I do that, if anything should happen to the money, I wouldn't be able to pay my obligations. I haven't been able to replace the cattle I've already sold. But if you sell these cattle, Mr. Morley, you might have a chance of getting all of your money returned. Well, what do you mean? Just this. Maybe, as you say, Roger is a thief. He's got the money, and he's investing it. Not spending a lot or having a wild time. So if we catch him red-handed, we can force him to give back everything that he took from you. I don't want to, for he's my son. It'll be a lot better if he has his lesson now, rather than wait until he tries to steal outside of his own family. Well, maybe you're right. You'll give us an order to sell the cattle? Yes. Yes, I will. Good. We'll conduct the sale just as you usually do. Nothing secret about it. Come on, Al, Johnny. We got work to do. But I tell you, you can't see Mr. Morley. All right, we're quitting that. All of us. Hey, what's happening here? Oh, Foy, uh, you know Mr. Morley's superintendent, Ed London. What's the trouble, Ed? I want my money and the men want theirs. We're not working till we get it. Mr. Morley's almost a month behind in paying his men. And he said definitely we'd get it today. Well, Ed, Mr. Morley has had some financial trouble. Hey, I know all about his financial trouble. Oh, you do? He told me he hadn't told anyone outside of the family. Well, you can't keep a thing like losing $100,000 a secret for long. Well, maybe not. Sounds like a stall to me. Ed, I wonder if you fellas could wait just a few days more. If you can and will, I'll give you my word you'll get every cent. And if anybody can't wait, tell them to see me. I'll try to get hold of enough somewhere to tide them over these few days. Well, all right. As long as you give us your word, Foy, I think I can handle things. Thanks, Ed. Sorry if I overstepped myself, Mrs. Turner, but... Wages are pretty important to men with families. No, oh, that's all right, Mr. London. I know how it is. Thanks again. We'll expect to hear from you, boy. All right, Ed. So long. So long. My. Oh, I just don't know what Mr. Morley's going to do. Everything will be all right soon, Mrs. Turner. We got a little plan, and if things work out, Mr. Morley will get back all the money that's been stolen. Oh, boy, if only he could. Of course, there's still a few details to be worked out, but we'll do that now. And a little later, we may need your help. Well, anything I can do, anything at all, just let me know. We will. Good night, Miss Turner. Good night. I don't get this, boy. It's very simple, Al. We'll sell the cattle, bring the money home, and guard it overnight. When the thief comes, we'll grab him. The thief ain't going to come if he knows we're guarding the money, though, is he? The thief ain't going to know, Johnny. That's the only part we'll keep secret. Now, let's get some sleep now so we'll be able to start selling the last of the cattle tomorrow. <laughs> This is the most money that's ever been in these pockets all at once. Yeah, imagine so. Just don't let Johnny know you got it, boy, or he'll find a gal who's supporting a poor old mother and a poor old father both. Oh, Uh, quit riding me, will you? Yes, you will. Ed, I certainly want to thank you for your help today. This was a lot of extra work thrown at you all of a sudden. Uh, we'll be home by tomorrow evening, won't we? Back to Morley's place, that is. Yeah, unless we get robbed on the way. What I'm getting at... There won't be time to pay the men tomorrow after we get home, will there? We'll pay them off the next morning, Ed. You, uh, gonna leave the money in Morley's safe like he always does? Sure. Why not? Nothing. Nothing, just wondered. You boys gonna guard the safe, of course. Wish we could, Ed, but the boys and I have a meeting over at Raven Springs. It's something we can't get out of. 
But the money will be all right. I'm sure nobody will try to rob the safe again. We can't afford to take any chances that this money will be stolen, Miss Turner. It's all Mr. Morley has now. Don't I know it. We put dummy packages in the safe, and I'll hide the real money here under the rug. I'm telling you because, well, somebody should know just in case there's a gunfight down at the office. Possible they might kill us. There mustn't be any shooting, boy. I'm hoping there won't be. But I don't want to take any chance of Mr. Morley losing the last of his money. Boys, we'll circle around now so the thief thinks we've left. Then head for the office to be ready for him when he comes. Hey, I thought you said we were going down to the office, boy. I did. What are we doing back in the house, then? Are we going to watch Roger leave and trail him? Wait a minute. Somebody's coming. Yeah, they are all right. Nice sound, now. Is it Roger? I can't make out. It's so dark. Going right for the corner of the rug. Hold it. Let him get the money in his hands first. Yeah. Then get him quick. No chance for a gunplay. All right, get him. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Oh, Turner. Stop it. Let him, I say. Well, you're the thief. Get away from Leave me. it in the Marley home. Keep in house for him, pretending to be their friend, and all the while robbing him out of every penny they had. Go ahead. But Marley's ruined. I burned every cent I'd taken the other times. I burned it up on Sherman Point. <laughs> I set out to ruin the Morleys, and I've done it. I got it even. His family drove mine off the range of guns. I've lived for this day. I've worked years pretending to like him so I could even the score, and I've done it. You can have this money. It won't mean anything to Marley now. He's all through. I've done what I wanted to do. I'm sorry for her, and I'm glad. Can't believe yet Mrs. Turner do such a thing. She never mentioned trouble between our families. I don't remember it. And I'd swear I never saw her until the day she applied for the job as housekeeper. Makes a pretty big hurt, I guess, Mr. Morley. Yes, but a great joy, too. I know my son... Oh, I should have known all along Roger's all right. I've still got him, even if there's nothing else left. Well, I'm not sure, Mr. Morley, but I think if you can prove money's been destroyed, as this was, the government will replace it. Well, thanks. I'll try, anyhow. Well, Al, I guess our work is done here. We'd better be riding along. Yep, guess we had. So long, Mr. Morley. <laughs> Well, that was sure a surprise to me, Foy. I'll remember the first night we visited Morley. Yeah. Mrs. Turner came to the door sort of flustered and wondering if we'd been waiting long. Said she'd been out feeding the chickens. Yeah. Well, chickens just aren't fed after dark, Al. She'd been up to the point at her bonfire. <laughs> In the early days of the West, the cowboy's life was a lonely one. Many a cowpoke, while spending long, lonesome hours in the saddle, dreamed of the day when he, too, would be able to get a herd together and start a ranch of his own. Quite naturally, along with this dream, was coupled the idea of finding a wife to help him enjoy a home with all its comforts and good food. Today, men enjoy their homes and good food, too. And in the West, Weber's bread is part of that enjoyment. For Weber's bread is good bread well-mixed and well-baked with a firm, even texture and a just-right moisture content that assures long-lasting freshness. Buy Weber's Bread the next time you go shopping. Your family will enjoy the distinctive flavor of Weber's Bread as toast for breakfast, combined with their favorite sandwich filling, or when served with the most elaborate meals. Each week, as you know, Foy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage make a point of doing a Western song which they believe belongs to the ages. This week, with your help, they've selected Cool Waters. Cool water. All day I faced a barren waste without the taste of water. Water. Old Dan and I with ropes 
burn dry and souls that cry for water. You listen to him, Dan. He's a devil, not a man, and he spreads the burning sand with water. Dan, can you see that big green tree where the water's running free, and it's waiting there for you and me? Nights are cruel, and I'm a fool. Each star's a pool of water. about it for this time, friends. We're mighty glad you were with us, and we hope you'll share our songs and stories of the West again next week. This is Foy Willing speaking for Al Sloy and Johnny Paul and Scotty Harrow, saying so long, and good luck to all of you. Drifting along, singing a song under From Hollywood, you've heard your all-star Western Theater, a V.M. Bear production starring America's great Western singers, Foy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. The script was by Ray Wilson, direction by Tom Hargis. This is Terry O'Sullivan speaking. Your all-star Western Theater came to you from Columbia Square. This is KNX in Los Angeles. X in Los Angeles.